Good evening, and welcome to Never Alone Christian Center and the NAC Experience. I'm your pastor, Pastor K. Thank you for joining us tonight for Behind the Scriptures, BTS, our version of Bible study. Well, without further ado, once again, Happy New Year. If I haven't wished you already or if I haven't seen you in person, we're so excited to jump right back into what God has planned for us here at Never Alone Christian Center. With that said, we are still working on our series that we began last year on how to help hurting people. There are several factors within this particular series that I want to make sure that we cover and uh, uh, make sure that we teach on not only as we wrap up 2022, but it's okay. We're going to roll it right into 2023 as we continue to stay in line with what God has assigned us to do. So if this is your first time streaming with us, thank you, thank you, thank you. Make sure you subscribe, follow, and like on our YouTube channel, Facebook, and Instagram. Keep in mind, I am a teacher. So if you miss something, it's okay. Grab the previous teaching, play it forward, play it backward, whatever you need to do, that you can put the whole series together. So join us in our reading of our foundational scripture found in the gospel of Matthew chapter 9, verse 9 through 12, as we continue in our series on how to help hurting people. And the word of God begins to read, it says, as Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. Later, Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disruptible sinners. But when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he said, which is our critical part here, he said, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for another opportunity to glorify your holy and your righteous name. Thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your people called and chosen by your name. Thank you for the call and the calls to seek and save those who are lost, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you that it is not in me, but it's in you and the power of your anointing that will break the yoke of bondage this evening in Jesus Christ's holy name we do pray and give thanks. Amen and amen. So we've been biting off this particular series now for several weeks or several months, and there are several factors that are uh, uh, intertwined in this particular series on how to help hurting people. We have made this statement several times. Is it the church's responsibility for the mental well-being of people? And I have said to some degree, yes. I believe that sin is the root cause of the abnormal behavior in people in this world. And when people are dealing with abnormal behaviors that is connected to sin, the church has the solution for that, which is Jesus Christ, the righteous. Now, with that being said, don't be foolish. There are doctors, there's medication, there's professional help out there. There are those that can deal with mental health crises that the church may not be able to handle. And it's okay to get professional help outside of the body of Christ. The purpose of the teaching is to acknowledge and address the hurt that mankind is experiencing. And we're doing that through several objectives, which we have called factors that are plaguing God's people. We've already covered abandonment, anger, anxiety, depression, fear, and we're now currently working on frustration. And we said the goal of this teaching is to bring compassion back to the body of Christ. Listen, I don't want anyone to think that just because you are saved and filled with the spirit of God, that you are not going to have times and points and rivers and valleys and ups and downs and mountains and molehills and mudslides in your life. That is just not a reality. Things happen to us. 
even though we're saved and filled with the Spirit of God. Why? Because we live in a body that was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We live in a world that is corrupt and the only thing that's saving us and protecting us and watching over us is the Spirit of Almighty God. It's the heavenly angels that keep us from being devoured by the evil of the world. So listen to me carefully. Things happen to us as well, but when they happen to us as we go through depression or anxiety or frustration or things such like, we must know that God has come to help us. He's come to help us. So we've been using a working definition for frustration. I want to get back to where we left off several weeks ago as we ended throughout the holidays. We said frustration is a feeling of dissatisfaction, often accompanied by anxiety or depression, resulting from unfulfilled needs or unresolved problems. Oftentimes we may feel frustrated and as we go through times of frustration, I want you to understand that it is a part of life, but you will and you shall overcome. Frustration has only come to be a temporary state of mental uh, uh, stability or a lack of mental stability. But in Jesus Christ, we have firm footing. We have joy. We have passion. We have love and kindness. And in him, we can stand. No matter where you are in life, we have to make the best of it and find Christ in those particular situations. So we left off several weeks ago uh, as we traveled through the holidays, we left off with how to recognize when a person is or may be becoming frustrated and we covered several items under that particular objective. And then we begin to list some uh, 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 examples of someone who may be experiencing signs of frustration and what can we do or what should we do? Perhaps you are experiencing frustration or you know someone who is experiencing frustration. So we have a, a, a list here of, of, of problem solving tasks that can help us. Now, we looked at number one, which is think before we speak. Number two was once we are calm, we can express our, confer our concerns. We look at number three, get some exercise. And number four, take a time out. And I want to pause there and say time out aren't just for children. Sometimes we as adults need to take time out. We have to think about what we're going to say because keep in mind, anything we say out of anger and or frustration, it's hard to bring that or reel that fish back in. Once we cast that problem out there or cast those words or say those words or say those, uh, send that email or te uh, text that, that text message or take that picture or that recording and we post it, it's hard and sometimes impossible to gather those things back. So take a time out if you are frustrated Pause, especially if you're at school or perhaps you're on your job or perhaps you're frustrated with your spouse or with your children. Just take a moment. Take a moment. Take a time out to gather your thoughts. And we left off with number five, identifying possible solutions if we're going through moments of frustration and we spend a great deal of time there. If you missed that particular teaching, please, please grab that replay. Cause I want to pick up here with this new information, but we have several items that I want to accomplish. Now, once again, keep in mind, don't be foolish now. Okay. If your frustration, your anger, your anxiety, your depression, your abandonment, your feeling of, of sadness is becoming overwhelming. It's okay to talk to a therapist, a psychologist, a doctor, to get medication. These things are okay. Now, Jesus doesn't want us to treat our problems with illegal substances, no, but he has supplied the wisdom and the knowledge to put people in the earth to help us. To help us, all right? So let's look at number six. Once again, 
These are some problem solving uh, solutions if we or someone we know may be dealing with frustration. Number six, stick with I statements. In other words, criticizing or placing blame might only increase tension. Instead, use I statements to describe the problem. Be respectful and be specific. For example, say, I'm upset with that you left the table without offering to help with the dishes. Instead of, you never do any housework. Let me say that again for our husbands and our wives and, and, and those that may be dealing with such situation. When we're dealing with frustration, stick with I statements. In other words, bring the problem on your side and express your feelings and, and, and emotion instead of projecting your frustration on another person. For example, once again, I'm upset that you left the table without offering to help with the dishes instead of you never do anything around here. You see how that particular transition of just words can change how another person may receive your frustration. Yes, there is frustration there. Yes, there is a solution there by simply sticking to I statements. So often I do this even when I'm teaching messages. I, I make sure to include myself in any teaching because it's not that I'm pointing, pointing, pointing. No, we are all in this together. If you are married, you are in this together with your spouse. If you have children, you're in this together with your children. You have bills, you're in this together to take care of your bills. You're on a team at the job, you're in this together to take care of the assignment. Frustration may rise, but it's all about dealing with it properly properly stick to i statements number seven and once again if you're just joining our streaming broadcast welcome to never alone christian center we're teaching on how to help hurting people and we're dealing with frustration so many people not only in the body of christ are dealing with frustration but just people in general listen you can turn on the news i don't like watching the news but any social media platform that you you can't help but to see that our world is in trouble. 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds shooting people and being shot down, carjacking, sickness and disease, rumors of wars, wars. Listen, our world is in trouble. So frustration may rise, anxiety may rise, depression may rise, but as children of God, God, we are not exempt, but we are equipped to handle the problems of this world. Number seven, don't hold a grudge. Listen to me. Listen to me. Don't hold a grudge. Forgiveness is a powerful tool. We taught on that for several weeks the end of last year. Forgiveness, the power of forgiveness, the powerful tool. If we allow anger and other negative feelings to crowd out positive feelings, we might find ourselves swallowed up by our own bitterness or our own sense of injustice. Forgiving someone who has angered us might help both parties learn from the situation and strengthen the relationship. Listen, the power of forgiveness can break down walls. So many people are dealing with high blood pressure, dealing with mental disease, dealing with problems physically and mentally and with their health, are always tired and sleepy Many things are affecting and ailing their bodies. And you know what is stemming from? Unforgiveness. Bitterness can become as wickedness inside our physical body. 
it can lead to physical corruption of physical tissue in our body because our heart and our mind and our body was never designed to hold on to unforgiveness and grudges. So often we've heard it takes more muscles in the face to frown than it does to smile. Why? Because God designed us to live in peace. And when we hold a grudge and we're frustrated with people, it steals our peace. You see, we all may deal with frustration, but do not hold a grudge. You see, so many of us are trying to go into this new year and do what it is God wants to do, wants us to do, to be a better husband, to be a better wife, to be a better parent, to be a better student, to be a better coworker, whatever you're trying to be, be a better, better business owner, whatever you're trying to be. Well, with that frustration that we have, that unforgiveness that we harvest, don't hold a grudge. Don't hold that grudge. All right? Solutions to frustration. Number eight, use humor to release tension. Now, listen, I, I follow this particular character, uh, particular guy on Instagram. He does a lot of animal characters and stuff. Listen, when I'm having a stressful day or whatever may be going on in my life, I find something that's going to give me some comic relief. Now that works for me. Use humor to release tension. Lightening up can help diffuse tension. Use humor to help your face, to help you face what's making you angry and possibly any unrealistic expectations you have for how things should go. In other words, avoid sarcasm though it can hurt feelings and make things worse. Find humor instead of sarcasm and anger and hate and jealousy and animosity. Find some humor so that you can get past the frustration. You don't like your boss today? Find some humor because the bottom line is we have to go to work and make money to make a living so that we can survive. We, as children of God, are not exempt from the cares of life. Yes, we cast our burdens on Jesus Christ, but we will be frustrated. We will have moments that we're sick and tired of people. But we have to deal with it accordingly. Deal with it accordingly. All right. So those are our three this evening. We'll pick up and we'll finish off this particular portion of frustration next week. Listen, thank you all for streaming with us here at Never Alone Christian Center. If this is your first time streaming with us, welcome once again. Connect with us. We love you. We're praying for you. And we're so excited to be a part of your Christian journey. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another opportunity that you have blessed us with to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Be with your people. Keep them in Jesus' name. Amen. See you guys next week. I love you. Let's go. Thank you for joining us for our service today. We hope you enjoyed the NAC experience. We would love to have you partner with us. If this is your heart's desire, here's how. Visit our website at neveralonecc.org. Click the service menu and select Partner With Us. Under Partner With Us, you will see a partnership form. Be sure to fill out the partnership form in detail and click Submit. We look forward to partnering with you. Let's go.